Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Melinda with Primrose and Pearl Bath Products and today I am making what turned out to be probably my most favorite soap ever. It is the Fairy Moon Soap from the most recent Enchanted collection. The first thing I'm doing is working with some soap dough to make the custom embed. The soap dough that I use is just my same soap recipe, but instead of pouring it and letting it saponify and kind of cure overnight, I uh, pour it into a container that's lined with plastic wrap and I wrap it up in the plastic wrap right away and then I let it sit for a couple of days and then it comes out really nice and pliable. So what I'm doing here is I'm rolling it so that I can fit it into the tube you see there. That tube is actually the embed maker that I'm using. It's an extruder. And I got it from I Dream and Soap, and I ordered it with uh, a couple of discs, and then I ended up designing a couple of my own because she didn't have everything that I wanted. Kind of like this fairy one. So I made a custom fairy extruder disc on my 3D printer. Well, I printed it on my 3D printer. I designed it using a combination of Tinkercad and this free website that I found that converts files into STL so I could go ahead and make that happen. I really like this extruder. It's easy to use. It's just a simple, like if you've ever used a caulking gun, it's a very similar motion to that. I'm guiding my embed out because I don't want it to get all twisted as it's coming out of the extruder. So I'm making sure it stays relatively straight. I will have to go back and do a little bit of cleanup and make sure that it's straight, but this kind of helps prevent any issues. And I wanted to make sure it was long enough before I went ahead and cut it off there. Now that I have those embeds set, I'm gonna let them sit for a little while so they can harden just a little bit. They're not so floppy. And here I am showing you my whole bunch of math that I had to do in order to make this soap happen. It is going to be a layered soap. So I am pouring the first layer, that was the sheet that you saw there, had the calculations for each layer, the percentage of the overall batter, and then how much by weight of the oil and lye I would need for each layer of the soap. I'm adding my lye water here. The blending of this layer goes really, really fast because it is such a small amount but I wanted to have a black base for my little fairy embed to sit on. So that's what this first layer is. It's just gonna be a tiny bit of black at the bottom of the soap. Now I started in that bigger container and very, very quickly realized that that was much too big of a container for the amount of soap that I had because it was just sucking all kinds of air into the batter and I didn't want that. When you suck too much air while you're stick blending, it just leaves bubbles in the end product. So I switched to the smaller container. The colorant for this layer is Nocturnal from Nurture Soap, which is now known as Nurture Handmade. They recently changed the name, but this is an older container, so it says Nurture Soap on it. It's just a straight up black mica. Like I said, I wanted the bottom layer to be super black, so that's what we've got here. here. My color is all blended and now it is ready to go into the mold. So I am just going to divide the batter evenly between these two soap molds that I have. I wanted to make two of them. That gives me roughly 20 bars of soap, depending on how I cut it with the molds that I have. I'm gonna get everything out of this container because I won't be coming back to this black color. So I'm gonna scrape everything out and then once I have it in the molds, I'm going to let it sit for a little bit so it has firmed up just a bit like you see here. It's not moving at all. And that's at, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes or so because I didn't want the fairy embed to just sink straight to the bottom. Now I am cutting that to size. I did leave it a little bit long because I like to fit them as I'm placing them. I have kind of a mishmash of different molds and some of them are just like, ever so slightly longer than the other ones so I like to leave this trimming part until the very last second so I can literally fit it as I'm putting it into the soap. So the first embed goes in just like that. And like I said it'll just nestle in there. The soap is thick enough that it will help support that so it doesn't flop and fall over and then I went ahead and I did the other one. So next layer of soap is going to be a silver layer. This is kind of the horizon line 
That color is from Wholesale Supplies Plus. And it is the Sterling Silver Mica. It's a very nice silvery gray kind of a color. So this one gets all mixed in and then it will be the next layer of the soap. When I went to pour this in because of the way that my embeds were sitting and I wanted my layer to look super even when I cut it, I had to pour a little bit on one side of that fairy that's sitting in there and then a little bit on the other side and I just kept going like that and eyeballed it until I felt like they were at the same level on either side of that fairy. All right, now that I have all the silver in, it's time to move on to the next layer. I'm doing a sort of an ombre, I hate to call it an ombre, a gradient look maybe, of different blues. So on this first layer, I did mostly blue vibrance with a touch of navy blue mica. And then I mixed all that in. And now I'm doing the same thing that I did with that silver gray layer. I'm putting a little bit on one side of the fairy embed and a little bit on the other side of the fairy embed, trying to make sure they get to be the same height. I was a little messy with my spatula and got it on top where I didn't really want it, but in the end, I don't think it really made that big of a difference. You couldn't really tell. Oh, don't mind the hand there. That was uh, Miss Pearl deciding that she was going to come in. She had to ask me a question and she wanted to wave to the camera. So there she is in her debut. All right, I'm going to finish pouring this and then we will move on to the next layer. All right, for the next layer, it is the same colors. It is the navy blue and the blue vibrance, but the ratios are a little bit different. For the first layer, it was three quarters of a teaspoon of blue vibrance and a quarter teaspoon of the navy. And in this layer, it is half and half. So it gets a little bit darker for this next layer. So I mixed it all up and I'm just pouring it right onto the top. I've covered that fairy embed, so I don't need to worry about making that even for this layer. You can see this one is just slightly darker than the layer below it because of how that ratio changed between the two. I do have one more embed to add to this soap. So once I get everything into the two soap molds and scrape out my container, I'm going to let it sit for a little while so that it will be able to support the weight for the next embed. For these embeds, I wanted a moon in the soap, fairy moon. So I used a cylinder column, not a cylinder column, a round column mold, silicone. That's what I meant to say. And melt and pour soap. So what I did was I melted the melt and pour soap and then you pour it into this column mold and you let it sit until it sets all the way through and then you can unmold it and you get this long cylinder. And then you use that as your embed and when you cut it, it looks like the round moon. So I did a yellow mica in there and like I did before, I'm fitting these as I'm putting them in so I can make sure that they are a perfect fit and they are not too long or too short. Once I have them the right size, I can gently ease them into my molds. And these are gonna sit kind of halfway into this layer and halfway into the next layer. And I'm putting them opposite of where I had the fairy sitting. So closest to the camera side is where I had the fairy embed. So I'm putting the moon on the further away side from the camera so that they'll they'll be opposite each other and it's kind of like the fairies looking up at the moon once the soap is cut. 
because this has already sat, I don't need to wait any longer before I put my next layer on. So as soon as I have these situated, I can move on to the next layer. And this one is getting colored with just the dark navy blue mica. It's going to be the darkest layer to look like the night sky. I'm mixing up my colorant and then I'm going to get that put into the top of my mold and then I will be topping it with something special. So this goes in. Again, I got to make sure that I get on both sides of that moon embed. Now I did end up having extra soap because the embeds were so large. I made my normal soap batter size, which I don't know why I did. I just, I did. Uh, but that extra soap does not go to waste. It goes into smaller molds to set up and either used to make things like soap confetti or we just end up using it or sometimes it goes out as samples, but definitely not wasted. It doesn't just get tossed out because that would be awful. It's good soap in there, man. So for the top of these soaps, I wanted it to be like the night sky so i've got some hollow glitter going down it's biodegradable glitter i almost said mica but it's they call it hollow glitter so that's going down as my first layer and i just use a makeup brush like a soft makeup brush dip it into the glitter and kind of tap it all over the soap so that it's covering everything I got a good layer of that hollow glitter down and now I am going over again with some Starbits biodegradable glitter from Mad Micas. This is also a holographic glitter. I love this one so much. I think it is the cutest glitter. It is little star shaped glitter pieces. I've used it a couple of times in the past and it always looks so cute on every soap I've put it on and it goes perfect with the theme of the fairy moon. So I'm bringing you in for a close-up here. It is really hard to capture how that hollow glitter really does look. It catches the light and then shines back different colors. That's why they call it like the hollow. Um, so excuse my crazy camera angles here, but I it just it's so hard to do it justice through a video. My soap has sat overnight and now it is time to cut. I'm turning this one to the side. Anytime I use the star bits, I turn the soap to the side so that I don't end up with drag marks throughout the soap as I am cutting it, but I underestimated how hard it was going to be to also cut through that moon embed with the melt and pour soap. They are a little tricky to cut through sometimes, depending on where they are in the soap and the angle, just because they're they're so much harder than the soap around it. So you get that like really easy bit to cut and then all of a sudden you kind of hit like a catch in when, when you're trying to cut. So you just have to be mindful of that if you're using those types of embeds. Here is the big reveal and the other side. The design does go all the way through because those are embeds and then the little sparkle on the top. I just love it so much. So you see the fairy looking up at the moon. I would love to hear what you guys think. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.